What is up guys, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking more about the PS Vita. But before we do, I wanna give a huge shout out for today's video sponsor. It is gvgmall.com. Now guys, I give a lot of plugs for gvgmall.com and honestly, they are the only ones that practically deserve it from my channel. And the reason is, is I do a lot of stuff with PC builds and stuff that involve tearing apart things, doing liquid cooling, doing regular air cooling, all kinds of stuff. And at the end, if you're a person who builds computers, you're obviously gonna need a fresh copy of Windows 10. So gvgmodel.com is the place you go to go ahead and activate your copy of Windows 10. So you can go and download a copy of Windows 10 through a disk image utility tool, plug that into your computer while your computer or build is complete, install that, next thing you know, you need a new code to activate so you can get all the updates to Bitdefender and whatnot. So gvgmall.com is the best place to go and pick it up because it's the cheapest. So for about 12 bucks using my code TSB, you can save 20% and pick up a fresh copy of Windows 10 activated or a activation key, shall I say, for about 12 bucks. So honestly, it's a steal. I can't recommend them enough. Tons of people still use it and I always get comments in the section from you guys telling me that the code still works and that it is legit. So if you guys wanna check that out, I have links in the description below for you guys to go and visit them and take a look. But anyways, let's jump on to the PS Vita. We're in 2020 and that means the Vita is officially eight years old at this point. Back in 2012, the first fat version you see here, the OLED version, had launched. And this guy was by no means a slug or a sloth in terms of power and in terms of feature sets for its time. Now the Vita originally launched with two variants. You could pick up a 3G version for 300 bucks or a Wi-Fi only version for $250. Again, back in 2012, having a handheld gaming console that was able to access internet on the fly was a thing that was not common. In fact, no other device competed with the Vita in that realm. In addition to that, the Vita also had an OLED screen, which it still does on the original model. It came with an OLED screen, came with speakers built in, had the ability to play AR or augmented reality cards through, through the use of cards, you could do features like that, had dual camera support, PS4 remote play support, it can act as a DualShock 4 additional controller for your PS4 as well. It basically had so many features and you could use your headphones with this with Bluetooth. So looking at you Nintendo, because you guys still can't do that with your Switch or your Switch Lite, which is ridiculous guys, why I don't understand, I, I just don't understand why you need adapters to use Bluetooth headphones with a console that has Bluetooth built in it. So anyways, that's, I digress. But the point is, the Vita at its time was ahead of its time. This thing came out with a bunch of features and it was rightfully so packed, that gorgeous OLED screen at 540p resolution. Again, 540p may not sound like a whole lot, but it was a ton for this system. And you were able to pretty much do all kinds of stuff with it. It even had battery life that was up to four hours to five hours, depending on what your gameplay style was like and what your brightness settings were like. So ultimately, why was the Vita a commercial failure? And I think I've covered this multiple times and even in my 2019 video, the point really comes down to the cost of ownership. They launched a stupid idea of putting proprietary memory cards inside this that cost pretty much the amount of a kidney if you're gonna go and sell it somewhere. <laughs> and it was just insanely expensive. So anytime you wanted to load something on here, you needed a game save file to play a game, you needed that memory card, and that memory card was stupid expensive. In some cases, your memory card cost more than your Vita. That is true. If you wanted to pick up a 64 gig memory card at the time, it was like 300 bucks which in case you had a Wi-Fi version, your memory card is more expensive than your actual Vita. So it made no sense. If the memory card itself wasn't, you know, one of the stakes in the ground to put the Vita away, the other thing was that the games are expensive. You're spending 60 bucks per game when at the time you had PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. Remember back in 2012, Coming into 2013, the new console generation or current console generation was just about to launch and flagship titles for these games were at 60 bucks a piece. So if you were a person who wanted to do any kind of gaming, whether it's obviously not handheld in that moment, you had 60 bucks to spend, you were more than likely going to spend that on a console game and not a handheld. So these are really, in a nutshell, the reasons why this thing just failed. Now, ultimately, Sony did try to remedy some of these by introducing the Slim model two years later. So this guy came out in 2014 and what did this really bring? to you it brought a few modifications but it did not address the main issues so one the probably the most arguably stupid thing that they did 
did was dumb down the resolution of the screen. This was an OLED. They changed it to an LCD. So as a result, it looks crappy compared to the original one. Now it's not bad by itself, but when you look at them side by side, there is a pretty noticeable difference in the overall quality of the screen. In addition, that's the bad. The good, they did lower the size of it. They added support for micro USB cards. They added built-in memory. So you had one gigabyte of memory, which meant you didn't have to buy a memory card all of a sudden. If you wanted to have game safe space. And that's practically about it. So fast forward today, eight years later, only reason this system is still live and the only reason I still actually talk about this system is because modders from all around the world have really given the Vita a breath of fresh life. And with the new current things that you can do with this system, it just makes it arguably still one of the best systems to actually have. You no longer have to worry about the expensive memory cards for starters, because with modifications, you can use a standard micro SD card, which is dirt cheap nowadays. You can pick up 128 gigs or 256 gigs for like 20 bucks or something. So it's still dirt cheap to add additional space to the thing. In addition, the cost of the system has gone down. If you go to GameStop, you can pick it up for 130 bucks. However, you can go to a ton of other places and grab it for even less than $100. Check out Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or even shopgoodwill.com. It's one of my favorite places to go to pick up used consoles, actually where I got a ton of those consoles back there from, for dirt cheap. So, it's just more compelling to pick up one of these systems that no matter what firmware you're running, you can easily modify it to do a lot of cool things with it. Now, I know when you think modification, hack, you know, custom firmware and all this stuff, you're basically just gonna delineate yourself to doing pirating and stuff like that. And while that may be the case for a lot of you guys, I don't endorse anyone to pirate games, and I suggest you guys don't do that and support your developers. However, with that being aside and addressing the elephant in the room, there's a ton of other things you can do with this, such as running the option of having emulators on your system. So now you can run a whole custom firmware of PSP under the name Adrenaline. So the PS Vita can play every PSP game that was ever made through Adrenaline. And in addition, you can also play every PS1 game that was ever made through Adrenaline as well. You can play PSP mini games. You can play PS2 ports like God of War series. There's just a huge library of games for the system, including some stuff that was originally developed and console exclusive for the Vita. You can play just a ton of different games on the Vita today, and it just opens up a breadth of customization. So aside from having access to playing different emulators, and when I say emulators, I don't mean just PS1, you can also play, or PSP for that matter, you can play Nintendo 64, you could play Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, pretty much everything up to the 64-bit era or 128-bit era, shall I say, works flawlessly on this system. And it's just easy to install. Hacking this thing is super easy. I've got tons of tutorials, guys. Check out the description. I'll leave links for all of them. It doesn't matter which PS Vita you pick up, there's a hack for it. They're all hacked. It's just amazing how much the modifications have changed the landscape for PS Vitas. You're able to do so much stuff. Another couple of cool things you can do with this guy now is you can actually stream your games from your computer over to this if you have an NVIDIA based GPU. So if you have a GTX 1080 Ti or whatever, 1060 or 2060 now with the RTX series, you can definitely stream or do game streaming using an app called Moonlight on to your Vita. So that gives you access to your system anywhere. So with the use of the app Moonlight, you can actually stream all your games from your PC over to your Vita. Another cool thing you can do. You can also stream games from your PS4 through PS4 Remote Play. Now you guys can argue that you can do that with an Android device now or an iOS device, but it is worth noting that Remote Play started with the PS Vita and the only other device that had it back then was Sony's own line of Xperia gaming phones. So with that being said, the experience hasn't gotten a lot better, but it is something that Sony has definitely doubled down on and they have mentioned that there will be a seamless transition to the PS5 with having support for PS or remote play in that case, be it through other devices. So this was basically the foundation of where that concept came from and it is still a concept that they very much believe in. Now the performance in that, honestly guys, not gonna sugarcoat it. It could have been better. You know, you do get issues where it lags here and there, but when it does work, it works really well. So it wouldn't be something you wanna play first person shooters with, but sports games, fighting games, stuff like that, probably good enough to do streaming on that. So overall, Eight years later, would I tell you guys that the PS Vita is still a solid system to buy? And honestly, it really comes down to how much you pay for it and how much you're willing to customize it. If you're gonna stick with a stock system and pay upwards of 150 bucks, it is absolutely not worth it. If you're gonna pay less than 100 bucks and you're gonna modify it, 
then this is absolutely a console that you should keep in your arsenal of gaming devices for your entertainment. There's just no reason why you would want to skip on this. This is still a very solid gaming console or handheld console, shall I say. For me, it's arguably one of my most favorite handheld consoles of all time. And I kid you not, when this thing first launched, I was a big proponent against it because I probably bought this two or three times and I sold it every time because I just couldn't find anything to do with it that was affordable. But things have changed. If you guys want to pick up any one of these models, um, I'm sure you can find the slim one a lot more easier than this because production has officially ended. So it's going to be tough to get both of them in general, but the slim is still easier to find. I will link it in the description below for you guys to go ahead and pick it up. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. Was this helpful for you to decide whether a Vita is worth your time and your hard earned money? I would like to know. If you guys like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you guys are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and support this channel. I really appreciate it if you guys do. Um, if you want to go an extra mile and support me on Patreon, be welcome to do that as well. I have that linked down below as well for you guys to check out. As always, I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching this video, and I will see you guys on my next one. Take care and bye-bye.